All right, good evening, ladies, gentlemen, LMB. So today we're pretty much just going to pretty much talk about what is on the tin, the French conquest of Tunisia. Now, what you must know is it was a really diplomatic thing because it was never guaranteed to France. It was never really guaranteed to France, but through some clever planning and through getting back on their feet after the historic defeat after the Franco-Prussian War, they managed to edge out Tunisia and get the rest of West Africa. So without further ado, it says so on the tin. Let's go. Alright, we're doing some more colonial episodes, so let's see what the French is up to this time. We're going to talk about the French conquest of Tunisia. Now some early contacts. And some early contacts. So Tunisia had been a province of the Ottoman Empire since the conquest of Tunis of 1574. Although great autonomy was under the authority of a bey. And a bey was basically an Islamic scholar, an Islamic teacher, Basically a chieftain pretty much, the, the mayor pretty much of Tunisia. So in 1770, Brigadier Raphael de Beauvais or Jean Joseph Raphael de Beauvais bombarded the cities of Beretz, Porto Frenia and Monastir in retaliation for acts of piracy. In the 19th century, Tunisia's commercial contacts with Europe were numerous and there was a population of French, Italian and British ex-pirateers in the country represented by consulates and consultiers. France had also made a major loan to Tunisia in the mid-19th century. The Tunisian government was weak, with an ineffective tax system that only brought in one-fifth of the tax collected and tax revenue. The economy was crippled with a series of droughts and the elimination of corsairs, which were actually, get this, pirates, by western fleets in the Berber Wars. Lastly, Tunisians had little control on foreign trade as ancient 16th century agreements with Europeans and European powers limited custom tax to 3%. As a result, its small industry was devastated by imports, especially in the area of textiles. But what else would bring down the fall of Tunisia? Of course, it would be colonial competition. Colonial competition. So, following the Franco-Prussian War of 1817 to 1871, French international prestige was severely damaged, and both Italy and the United Kingdom attempted to reinforce their influence on Tunisia. The Italian representation and the representative fell through clumsiness, but the British representative, Richard Woods, was more successful in Tunisia. In order to limit French influence, Woods obtained the reinstatement of Tunisia as a province of the Ottoman Empire in 1871, Although the regional autonomy was still guaranteed and granted, so not to get too close to any other European power. Great Britain continued to try and exert influence through commercial ventures, but there was not, and they were not really that successful as well, but they tried better than Italy. Mamma mia! There were also various Tunisian land ownership disputes among the French, the British, and the Italians. Or French, Britain, and Italy. France, or France, Britain, and Italy. There we go, there we go. Um, the French wished to take control of Tunisia, which neighbored their existing colony of Algeria, and to suppress Italian and British influence there as well. So at the Congress of Berlin of 1878, a diplomatic agreement was made for France to take over Tunisia, while Great Britain obtained control on Cyprus from the Ottoman Empire, and Italy got squat. Wow! Subsequently, the noose of Tunisian territory as a sanctuary for the rebel Kumurir or Kuromir bands, which were pretty much Tunisian Bedouins at that point, gave a pretext for military intervention. And, as we know with the, the Gulf of Tonkin incident, yeah, 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 French references, even though that was the American one. Anyway, the occupation. So on the 20th of April 1881, 28,000 men under General Fougamel de Bouchcanade or Leonard Leopold Fougamel de Bouchcanade entered Tunisia. On the 1st of May, the city of Bissaret surrendered to 8,000 men under the control of Jules Amé Berat, who actually continued on his way towards Tunis, which was the capital pretty much. So Beret entered Tunis between the 3rd of May and the 6th of May 1881. He had in his possession the Bordeaux Treaty, establishing a protectorate on Tunisia and Tunis, which had just been cabled to him by the French government in Paris. So on the 11th of May, Beret, the General Council Theodore Roustan, 
and General Pierre Leon de Mirand, or Mirand, accompanied by an armed escort, presented the treaty to Mohammed El or Mohammed the Third Al Sadiq or Sadiq Bey. But I do, I do believe it's Muhammad, yeah, Muhammad the Third Al Sadiq or Al Sadiq or Sadiq Bey. The Bey of Tunis between 1859 and 1881. And this guy is dripped out. Let me tell you, this guy is dripped out. Who had resided in Qasar Said or Sid? Surprised, Sadok Bey requested several hours of reflection and immediately gathered his cabinet to actually start discussing stuff and not a rebellion. Some of its members insisted that the Bey should escape towards Kanyan to organize resistance, but Sadok Bey decided to accept the protection and the protectorate. The Bordeaux Treaty was signed by both parties on the 12th of May 1881. An insurrection soon broke out in the south on the 10th of June 1881, and then in Safax. Six siren clouds were dispatched from Toulon, which was the southern naval... You know, yeah, you, you will know Toulon in 1941, but for now, Toulon. Which were the Colbert, the Froland, the Mogoron, or the Moringo, the Tradon, the Revanche, and the Sauvelante, to join the French Navy ships in Tunisian waters. In Safat, three ironclads from the division of the Levant were already present, which were the Alma, the Rhine Blanche, and the La Gossolinia, together with the four cannon boats, because this is still 1881. Um, Safat was bombarded, and on the 16th of July, the city was invested after heavy fighting, with seven dead and 32 wounded for the French. At Cournion, 32 men, 6,000 horses, and 20,000 tons of supplies and material were landed to the rest of the troops. Korean was taken without a fight on the 20th of October 1881. Now let's get into some consequences. Let's see what's going on here. Great Britain and Germany silently approved of the invasion of the country while Italy protested in vain. Mamma mia! Tunisia thus became a French protectorate. With the great powers from the French and for the French, the French resident, which was pretty much just like a what you would call a mirror, governor general, that sort of stuff. Um, being simultaneously the prime minister, controller of the state, controller of the state finance, and the commander in chief of the armed forces of Tunisia, was pretty much the new Bay. So in 1882, Paul Cambron energetically took advantage of his position as resident, leaving the Bay essentially powerless, and in effect administering Tunisia as yet another French colony. The French established an important naval base in Biritz uh, in 1898, 1898, right, which would obviously not have ramifications nearly a hundred years later in, no, wait, that'd be 50 years later, no, wait, yeah, that'd be 50 years later, um, in 1958, but, we are just, is that almost a hundred, no, 19, it'd be 1998, that'd be a hundred years, this is like 50, this is like halfway point. Damn, math is hard, but yeah, I think like 50, 60 years. Um, Italy would respond in 1911 and 1912 in the Italo-Turkish War, leading to the Italian occupation of Libya and the colonization of Libya. But with that being said, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you had fun with that one. Uh, I know it's very different. I actually had a setup this time and actually do it properly. So I do hope you enjoy the extra effort from me just sitting up, but... With that being said, I do hope you enjoyed. I do hope you learned something. And um, I guess um, the, the lesson of this story is when you get a protection treaty, um, just know that you're going to be a, a colony sooner or later. So with that being said, I do hope you enjoyed. I do hope you learned something. Sanitize, stay safe, and until next time, I'll see you in 1958. Learn something.